You utilize all the Holocron scripts today on premises, right? They're great scripts. We love using them. Today I'm going to show you how you can take those same scripts, put them into Azure Data Factory, and do maintenance against your Azure SQL DB. Today on MS Tech Bits, Tales from the Field. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. If this is your first time finding us over at Tales from the Field, give us a like and please hit that subscribe button. We have content that drops every Tuesday where we discuss Azure Data Community blogs and videos that's produced by you, the Azure Data Community. We also have MS TickBits that drops on Mondays and Wednesdays. You're watching one of those now. My name is Daniel Taylor at DBA Bulldog on Twitter. Let's get over to the content. All right, here you can see Ola Hologren's SQL Server Maintenance Solution. We'll provide the link when we drop the video. Also, we're going to have some prerequisites for deploying the solution. We're going to have Azure Data Factory. We're going to have Azure SQL DB. We're going to need Ola Hologren scripts. We're going to use Azure Data Factory Managed Identity. We're going to provide read access to the managed to the master database. We're going to provide DBO access to the user databases. We're going to utilize the command log table. Uh, we'll deploy one for each Azure SQL DB. We're also going to require OLA scripts. We're going to require the command execute, the index optimize, and we're going to require the command log cleanup. All right, let's take a quick look at the environment we're going to deploy. We have our logical server. We have our Stack Overflow database, and we have deployed our Azure Data Factory. Those are the three components that we're going to utilize today. Okay, let's look at the environment that we're going to do, that we've deployed our SQL DB to. We have our logical server. We're going to copy this. We're going to need this server name here in a bit. And down below, you can see we have our Stack Overflow database. We're going to deploy these scripts that we mentioned these scripts will be provided. We're going to do a create schema. And then after we create the schema, we are going to go through and we're going to um, deploy our command log table. We're then going to deploy our command execute. We're then going to deploy our index optimize. And then finally, we will deploy our cleanup. Okay, let's pop over to Azure Data Factory. You can see here I've started creating a SQL DB OLA maintenance solution. I wanted to show you how to create a link services real quick here. We're going to type in Azure SQL database. And my friend Bradley Ball also did a great job of showing how to parameterize these within, our, within your environment. I'm going to call this something like OLA maintenance solution. And we'll type that in there. I'll get that correct and we'll type it in. All right, you could put a description there. We're going to use the auto integration runtime. Now I'm going to do it. I'm going to enter manually here. And remember, we copied the server name from our previous screen, uh, from the previous screen we're in. I'm going to put the logical server name in there. For the database name, I'm going to put in this variable. So I'm going to paste in this variable here. It's going to be a dynamic content. Let me grab that and put this right in here. Okay, I'm going to paste this right in here. All right, we're going to do the dynamic content and we're going to paste. We're going to paste in this link service.db name. Don't worry about the error right now. We'll correct that here in a second. We're going to go ahead and click on, we're not going to change anything else. We're going to go ahead and click on OK. Now let's scroll down and let's go to parameters real quick to correct our error. We're going to type in DB name. Um, case, make sure that I have the case the same as I had in the, in the um, variable up there. And then for default value, I'm going to leave it blank. And now we're going to choose our authentication method. We're going to do managed identity. So for managed identity, we're going to select system, assign managed identity. We're going to uh, see here that we have data ADF. That's our managed identity. I've granted that the necessary access inside our master and our user database. And we are going to hit create. And you can see here we see we now have our Ola maintenance solutions links service. 
Okay, so our next step in the process is to create a lookup table. So we're going to go to activities, we're going to type in look, and then you can see it found it. We're going to drag lookup over there, we're going to drag the lookup activity. We're going to move it onto our platform, we're going to give it our canvas there, we're going to call it something like list databases, because that's essentially what we're going to be doing with this. We're going to be listing databases. Let's click on settings. On settings, let's select new. Up here, let's type in Azure SQL, and there we go. Select Azure SQL database. Go ahead and create, select that. For the name, we are going to call it master underscore sys underscore database, because I already have databases out there, so we'll call it database. We're going to then for link service, we're going to use the link service, the Ola maintenance solution link service that we created earlier. We're going to go ahead and select that. And we are going to click on edit because we know the table name. The table name is going to be schema sys. And then for the table, we're going to type in databases. So we're going to be selecting from sys dot databases. We're not going to be doing anything with advanced for this, so we can just go ahead and click on OK. OK. So we're going to move over now. So once we select that, we're going to type in our master database for the value here so we can test some things out. We're going to click OK. And here we go. We're going to click on Open for our lookup task. And we're going to type in here for the value master so that it has a connection. We're going to select back on our pipeline and we are going to see here and we're going to do preview data. It's going to return data, but is it the data we need? No, it's only selecting the master database. Wonder what's going wrong here. Let's take a look at that. So here, my friend Bradley Ball in his video, he calls us out. We have first row only selected. Let's get rid of that. Then we're going to type in our own query. So we're going to type in select star. We're going to create a dynamic some dynamic content here. We're going to type in select star from, and then we're going to do go from sys.databases. So select star from sys.databases, and we'll spell it right, where database ID is greater than four. And why we do greater than four for the database ID is so that we only pull the user databases. Anything less than that is a system database. So we're going to click over here. We're going to do preview data again. Well, oh, look at that. But it's returning still a little too much information. We only need the name. So we're going to modify one more piece here. We're going to go in. We're going to go back to our select. And rather than select star, we're going to select name. We are only interested in the database name. Let's hit preview. And there we go. We're getting only the name of the user databases. In this case, we only have one database on a logical server, Stack Overflow. So we're returning the data we need. So we can X out of that. And now what we need to do is we need to go up here on the top and we need to hit publish all because we don't want to lose all the work we've done. All right, now that we've got our lookup table, we need to do something with that, right? So we're going to now create a for each activity. So over here under activities, we're going to type in for each. We're going to then, once we spell it right, we're going to drag that over there and whoop, we're going to get the on success connector there um, so that when we get the list of databases, it goes to our for each loop. We're going to go to settings for our for each loop. We're going to type this in something like, oh, I don't know. Let's call it for each database because that's essentially what we're going to do. We're going to list we're going to go through each database in the list. We're going to go to settings. Then for settings, what we're going to do here is we're going to do sequential. You could choose, you could saw there, you could choose sequential or batch. I want to go through each database individually on my logical server. You could choose batch and do multiple databases at the same time. Just be aware if you're using elastic pools for your Azure SQL DB, that could cause some performance issues. So for item name, we're going to put some dynamic content in there. We're going to paste this in here. Um, we're going to take the output value from our list databases by running, by putting that dynamic content in there. And now we are going to drill into our for each activity here and add some activities within our for each. We're going to add some stored procedures in here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to search for stored procedure. Once again, typing 
apparently is not in my forte today. We're going to drag the store procedure over there. Now we're going to call this store procedures. Let's call it something like mm, maintenance solution, right? So we're going to type that in there, um, that value in there. We're going to go over the settings. Now we're going to choose for our link service, the OLA maintenance solution, the link service we created earlier in the demo. And now what we're going to do is we are going to go grab a value. We're going to put a value in here and we're going to paste this. We're going to paste this value right here inside our dynamic content and basically at item parentheses dot name. That's going to take the name from the query that we created. We're going to hit refresh. And here you can see that it's got a populated. If you don't type in the database name you're using here. Click OK. This is going to be your user database to test where we deployed our store procedures. Um, and what this is going to do, it's going to make it a little bit easier for us to populate that store procedure name. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go down here and we're going to hit the drop down and we're going to select index optimized. With the index optimized, what we're going to ne do next is we're going to import the stored procedure parameters. Okay, once we click on import, we're going to type in, if you don't have a value over there, use one of your user databases. I'm using Stack Overflow 2013. Click on OK. And it's going to, what you're going to see here is it's going to populate all the possible parameters that the index optimized script has. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit pause here in a second. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to choose some of the ones that I most recent, most frequently use when deploying this this store procedure through ADF. Here you can see I've selected um, a couple of uh, parameters that I'm not interested. So what we're doing is we're selecting those parameters that we're not in, interested in here to delete. Oh, I missed a couple. I missed uh, pad index. I'm not interested in that for a parameter. I'm not interested at this time on partition level or resumable or sort in temp DB. Um, nor start modification level. Um, this was good though, because now we can go up here, we can hit delete. Let's look at our parameters one more time. Oh, I got a couple more in here. Eh. Let's get rid of time limit and let's hit delete. Now you can see what we have here is the set of parameters that I normally use when running maintenance against Azure SQL DB. These may vary by your shop and they will vary by your shop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit pause here and then I'm going to come back in and you can see here what I've done is I filled in some of these parameters that I typically use. Um, go through Ola's documentation. They're great. And fill in the parameters that fit to your environment. They need to fit to your environment. Not one size fit. Not one size will fit all. Note there down at the bottom, I have update stats e statistics equal Y. That should actually be an all. Um, I make a note of it also in the video at the end, but I just want to call that out here. We're going to publish all because we don't want to lose all of our work. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to drag another store procedure over. And what this store procedure is going to do, whoop, I forgot the whoop, we're going to drag on success. Where we're going to go to our next store procedure. And what this store procedure, we're going to go to settings here. And it's the similar setup that we did for the previous store procedure. We're going to choose our link service. We're going to use the OLA maintenance solution that we created at the beginning of this demo. We're going to go ahead and select that. There we go. A little bit of a delay there. And I'm going to type in a value here and we're going to paste that value that at item dot name, that variable that we're passing in. We're going to use the at stack over or the stack overflow 2013. We're going to hit refresh. And then you can see here that I can pull and I can uh, select my uh, command log cleanup. This is going to clean up the data that we're putting in the command log. We're going to go ahead and we're going to hit publish. And once this is published, we are essentially done you all setting up our pipeline. All right. So with the pipeline being done, let's hit debug. I'm going to hit start 
you can see here that it was in progress and then all of a sudden it succeeded i did a little julia child's magic there i put the cake in the oven and i pulled it out almost instantaneously but you can see there that it took about an overall of 15 minutes to execute so the next thing for us to do is i want to call out one more time that Originally, earlier in the video, I had a Y in that parameter. It really needed to be an all. So I just wanted to point out there and show you that that needed to be all. So let's go over and let's show and prove that our maintenance ran. I'm going to run this select top 1000 again against command log. You can see here that it did work against our Stack Overflow 2013 database, the object names it did, some of the the objects that were completed the extended info and you can see here also the uh, update statistics and the alter index it was completed Ooh we that was a long one it was a fun one though what did we learn today we learned that we could utilize azure data factory to run ola hologram's maintenance database maintenance solution against azure sql db some of my favorite scripts some of your favorite scripts i know many dbas out there use it that's why i wanted to put this video together please leave comments at the bottom if there's any suggestions i'm always uh willing to uh hear them because that's how we grow as in how we grow as individuals until next time daniel taylor dba bulldog on twitter i got shit to do the aftermath of preparation good food good mood blood in circulation one step at a time yeah that's how you make it set a goal you control and the steps you take them i try to pick one thought have some concentration and if i make a mistake they 